Hey, guys, when I was out back, I found a car with its lights left on. Who wants to make the announcements? Oh, let me. We're sorry to interrupt the show, ladies and gentlemen, but we're the driver of a green Vega with the license plate number one big stud. Please come to the lobby. You've left your lights on. Enjoy extra sugar-free gum. You get extra flavor, extra fun, get extra sugar-free gum. Excuse me, Gwen. Can I see you for a minute? Me? Yes, in my office, please. Sure, Mr. Brown. Gwen's in trouble. I'm not in trouble. I'm not in trouble, am I, Mr. Brown? Of course not. I wanted to ask you something in private. I'm asking you because you're a woman. What did you want to ask me, Mr. Brown? Lorraine and I have our 15th wedding anniversary coming up, and I wanted this year to be special. Oh, Mr. Brown. Now, no, uh, in the past, I've always given Lorraine whatever was appropriate for that particular anniversary. Uh, the first anniversary was the paper anniversary, so I got Lorraine a subscription to Reader's Digest. Um, eight was bronze. I had the pumps that she wore to our wedding made into planters. Tenth was aluminum. I bought siding for the house that we hope to have someday. I think I get the picture, Mr. Brown. Yeah, the point is, I've always done everything by the book, and this year... I'd like to break out, do something really... Romantic. Yes. <laughs> the problem is that I'm not really comfortable with things like that. I'm not what you'd call overtly sexual. <laughs> I was hoping that you might be able to help me come up with something. I suppose being a manager of a movie theater, you've given Lorraine a lot of candy over the years. All of which she's eaten. <laughs> Besides, that's so traditional, and I was looking for something a little different. Maybe a little sensual. A little sensual? You mean like sheets? <laughs> well, I, I was thinking more like a nighty. Well, thank you very much. Those are very good ideas. And I'll be letting you know if I use any of them. Oh, Mr. Brown, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. No, 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 no. Not at all uncomfortable. Um, maybe I'll just get her a bigger card this year. What if you wrote her a card this year? Wrote her a card? Or maybe a poem. <gasps> Mr. Brown, if you could do that, that's very personal, very romantic. And yet not overt. <laughs> you know, I think I'd like to give that a try. There are so many things I'd like to say to Lorraine that aluminum siding just can't. What did Mr. Brown want? It was personal. I'm not going to tell you guys. We'll tell you what Rick Peters said about you. What? You tell us what Brown said. My lips are sealed. It's what Rick Peters said about you. Sorry, I'm late. What's wrong? 
I just did one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I just called Leo Davenport and told him I didn't want to see him anymore. You're kidding. Leo Davenport, didn't he graduate last year? Yeah, he was that real intense guy on the wrestling team. He competed in two different weight classes. He'd starve himself for two days to get down to one weight, and then after the first match, he'd eat bananas for an hour. He was crazy. <laughs> What's he doing now? He's a Marine. Uh -huh. He's going to come home for my birthday, but I know he's a lot more serious about me than I am about him, and I just didn't think it was fair to string him along anymore. What did he say when you told him? I didn't actually talk to him. I left a message with his drill sergeant. You left a message? Well, I'm not really good at goodbyes. I don't know why Leo wanted to keep seeing me anyway. When people move away, they should just forget about other people. Yeah, but people are heartless. Majestic Theater. Oh, hi, Mrs. Brickhouse. Yeah, she's here. Hold on. It's your mom. Hi, Mom. Guess who? <laughs> what? Leo called my mom. Did you tell him where I was? Mom! What? Really? Well, that makes me feel a little better. <laughs> okay. I'll see you when I get home. Bye-bye. Your mom told him you were here? Yeah, and I just know he's going to try and call me, and I don't know what I'm going to say to him. Well, what was it that made you feel a little better? She bought me a blouse. <laughs> this is the grossest movie I've ever seen. I thought I was going to vomit my guts out. Can I help you? Let's see what looks good. If that's Leo, I'm not here. We're not going to go through this again tonight. He called for you three times last night, and we covered for you each time. Tonight, you take the call. But I don't have anything to say to him. We're not your slaves, Lynn Holly. Scott. <laughs> not your slave either, much as he'd like to be. I can't believe you're going to make me do this. I doubt that's him calling again anyway. It's obvious you're avoiding him. The guy would have to be an insensitive idiot not to know that. Is not Leo Davenport out of the box office? What? Oh, my God. It is Leo. Then who's this? It's probably someone calling the theater for information. <laughs> I gotta hide. Lynn Holly, wait. I can't. I'll go talk to her if you stall. Excuse me, uh, I'm looking for a Lynn Holly Brickhouse. Oh, I'm sorry, I think this gentleman was ahead of you. <laughs> what kind of girl are we looking for? Sorry to borrow your room, Marlon. Well, hey, no problem. Sorry I screamed like that. I'll be downstairs when you're finished. Gwen, if you're up here to try to talk me into seeing Leo, forget it. Lynn Holly, I know you don't want to face him, but you can't go through life avoiding every confrontation. I have up till now. How? You've gone out with lots of guys. But I never actually break up with them. I just find excuses not to see them. And after a year or two, they get the message and get up. You mean you've never actually told anyone you don't want to see them anymore? I suppose you're going to put some kind of judgment on that. <laughs> All I'm saying is you've got G.I. Joe standing downstairs, and if you want him to leave, you're going to have to be the one to tell him. So there we are, crawling through the jungle on our bellies. <laughs> Dead of night, Kong all around us, and some damn fool trips a flare. The sky lit up like the 4th of July, and there we sit, 12 of us, like ducks in a blind. Jeez. We started to fire, but we were surrounded. There must have been a hundred of them shooting at us from every angle. What happened? Wiped us all out. <laughs> they buried us right there. If you're ever in that part of the jungle, you can still see our 12 little markers. Wow. I'm honored to know you, sir. <laughs> Lynn Holly. Oh, Leo, what a surprise. Uh, I'll bet it is. Lynn Holly, what's going on? I got some crazy message from my sergeant saying I wasn't supposed to come back for your next couple of birthdays. 
<laughs> then I called you at home to find out what was going on. Your mom said you were here. And I called here three times yesterday, and they said you were out. So I got a 24-hour pass, jumped on a plane, and flew 1,500 miles to see if there had been some kind of misunderstanding. <laughs> Do you not want to see me anymore? Is that it? No, that's not it. Is it somebody else? No. It is somebody else, isn't it? I just told you it wasn't. Lynn Holly, if it's somebody else, I'll leave you alone. Just, just, just tell me the truth. All right, Leo. Yes, it's somebody else. It is? Yes. Who? Him. Oh, <laughs>